Hey guys, this is Josh once again with the PCBSD YouTube channel. I have a video today I think you guys are going to like. Uh, one of the biggest questions we get from our new users especially is, can I play my Steam uh, library of games on PCBSD? Well, the answer is yes. I'm going to show you guys how you can install Steam on PCBSD and also kind of how to go ahead and get it configured um, the way you're going to need to have it configured uh, to get these games running on PCBSD. I went ahead and fired up uh, Mass Effect 2 for you here. I don't know why the window does this on occasion, just with this one particular game, but all you have to do is just click on that button to maximize the window, uh, and it will fix that, that little resolution glitch for you. Um, now, you're going to see during this tutorial, I'm actually running the games windowed. There's no reason you can't run these games in full screen. I just found that when I was trying to actually record in high definition with a, with a really fast frame rate, what was happening was it was trying to resize uh, my resolution, causing all kinds of silly bugs and, and problems. So, uh, uh, you know, you guys will have to forgive me for that, but um, uh, for now, you know, in this video, I'm going to show you these video games running in window mode. So, as you can see right now, you can see that uh, Mass Effect 2 did start up. Everything's running fine. We're getting into the section where 3D is starting to be rendered, and it is doing just fine. So, I'm going to close out this game and I'm going to switch over to another one, and I'm going to show you guys Skyrim. A lot of you guys are familiar with this game, I'm sure. Uh, very good game, open world 3D, so it'll have a lot of really cool stuff for us to look at once we start it up. There we go, it's, it's coming up right now. All this is uh, definitely made possible with a little bit of help from Joe Maloney, who is a member of our community. He helps out um, on a volunteer basis with uh, some development stuff, and he did point out that there was a uh, patch for NVIDIA video cards that fixed a lot of the 3D rendering issues that we were running into with these games. So I uh, definitely want to give you a shout-out, Joe. We appreciate your, uh, your work and, and definitely bringing it to our attention that this is... Uh, working a lot better now with this patch. Alright, so we're waiting on the game to load up right now. We're going to give it just a minute here. Skyrim isn't really known for its super fast load times, so, you know. I am running a GT640, so it's it's a nice middle-of-the-road card. You know, it's, it's uh, not slow. And there we go. All right, let's have a look around here. And we'll go outside, see what's going on out there so we can kind of get a better look. All right. Any moment now, come on. There we go. All right, so let's, oh, look at that. You can see the 3D is being rendered perfectly. There's no artifacts, there's no glitching, nothing of that, nothing of that sort. Just have a nice look around. Excellent. So yeah, I just kind of wanted to show you guys those games working. Wanted to show you how they looked in PCBSD. And then in just a moment, I'm going to go into how we actually accomplish this. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and open up the App Cafe. And we're going to go to Browse for Apps. We need to go ahead and grab the Wine Package. And you can do either of these. I've had better luck, honestly, with the Wine Stable version, which is the first one. So I'm going to go ahead and press Install Now. I did go ahead and test both of those. And what I was running into was a little bit of an issue with, um, with graphics card detection with the newer one. Neither one of them actually detected my graphics card out of the box correctly. But for some reason, the stable version, even with the incorrectly detected video card, uh, was still fine. Uh, I was still able to go ahead and play all these games uh, that you guys are going to see here later on. So we're just going to give that a minute here to complete. And the only difference between those two that you saw those two versions of wine um, is the first one is the stable version version 1.6 
and the next one was the Devil version uh, development branch, and it is 1.7 series. So you can see right there. So, anyways, if you're trying to play newer games, you might have better success there um, on this branch. But uh, at any rate, most of my games are at least a year or older, so I, I was able to play them just fine on this. Okay, so let's go over here. Wine is installed now, so the first thing we need to do is we need to start up wine configuration. You can see that right here, wine configuration. I'm going to click on that, and it's going to go ahead and build um, us a wine directory, which is good. That's going to act like a C drive would on a uh, Windows box uh, that we can install all our stuff to. Okay. Default settings. Um, let's go ahead and set our default settings. Okay, we can turn that off. There's no need for that. Um, that's okay. Okay, now this is important. Um, once you install Steam, you're not going to be able to read any of the text unless you do this fix. So, very important. We're going to type DWR for DWrite. You can see that's the first option that comes up. So, go ahead and click on DWrite and press Add. You'll see right here it says it is native or built-in. We need to change that to completely disabled. Once this is done, you'll be able to see text inside Steam again. So um, that's that's a good thing. That's going to um, help us out a lot. So we go ahead and press Apply. And OK. There we go. All right, great. All right, now. The next thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and open up a console. Here's our console window. Okay. Let's see here. I'm going to go ahead and grab, I've got a document open here that has the NVIDIA patch, which is what we're going to run first. All right, we're going to flip back over. And I'll have all this below in the description for you guys. There we go. And as you can see, it says it's patching i386 wine to work with the NVIDIA driver. Everything was detected correctly. If you don't have the correct NVIDIA driver at this point, it will go ahead and grab that and want to load that for you. All right. It says it's all cleaned up. So that part is finished. Okay. So now the next part is we need to edit the uh, bootloader. So we are going to go edit slash boot slash loader dot conf. Okay. Now you'll see right here on this last line, this is what I added here. V is in Victor, F is in Frank, S is in Sam, dot Z. F is in Frank, S is in Sam, dot arc, underscore, max, equals, quote, 2048M, quote. Now that's a lot of memory. Um, some of you are probably not going to be running with 16 gigabytes of uh, RAM memory, so don't set this number so high. You can do just fine setting this for probably 256 or 512 on most systems. I just had a lot of memory to play with. So at that time, I kind of upped it just to kind of play around with. Now, the reason for this is even after I followed uh, Joe Maloney's instructions for installing the games, I was getting memory uh, read-write restrictions and errors, and games were just crashing like crazy. So what I realized uh, was that the ZFS file system was actually, was actually hogging all of the memory. So what we had to do here was we had to go ahead and define a section that it couldn't go to, okay? So that's what we're doing here. This is actually supposed to be done in 10.1 10 by, 10 by default. However, if you have a system that's been a rolling update for a while, for maybe like the last year or two, um, you've been updating since 9 or whatever, um, this is probably not going to be set. So make sure that is set in slash boot um, loader.conf. Okay? Now the next thing you need to make sure you do is you do see up here that after you uh, make any changes, you have to run grub make config dash o slash boot slash grub slash grub dot cfg. 
Um, you have to run that anytime you make any changes here. Okay, so uh, make sure you do that and you'll be just fine. Okay, great. So anyways, we're done with that and we can go ahead and close that out. And I think we can close this out. All right, let's go ahead and browse to the directory where I have the Steam installer. So I already installed Steam. Um, I just went to the installer, double clicked on it. It literally took like maybe about 10 seconds um, to get through the whole thing. And then after that, you are left with this. So pretty cool, you know, I've got my whole library here. Nothing's installed at the moment, but you know, you guys are free to download, experiment, kind of check these things out, see what works, what doesn't. I'll also have a full list of all the games that I tested. And if I can get Joe Maloney to also uh, submit a list, we'll put up his games as well that also worked. So that will give you a good baseline of uh, maybe some games you can start with to play. Um, also, there's one more thing you guys probably want to check out. You want to go into settings and then go to in-game. You want to actually um, uncheck this box that says enable the Steam overlay while in-game and then press OK. That does lead to a couple of memory errors uh, that were happening during some of the games. So make sure you've disabled that and you'll do just fine while you're playing these things. So uh, do keep in mind there is a, a video card detection error. Um, I think I did mention that a little bit earlier, but it's not a, it's not a catastrophic bug. It's not going to actually keep you in most cases from playing any games. Um, what happens is I have a GT640. Uh, it was being detected as a GT8800. The cool thing is though, even though it was detected incorrectly, it appears that the driver was handling the extended graphics or the the better graphics, um, no problem. I had Skyrim set on high, for instance, and um, uh, Mass Effect was set pretty high as well. Had no problem handling uh, those games. So do keep that in mind, even if it identifies it incorrectly, it's not a big deal. Um, the game should work just fine. It's a known bug in wine, so uh, not a big issue there. Anyways, if you guys have any questions, comments, or feedback, leave that below. Maybe you have a better way of customizing wine and PCBSD to work with your games. We'd love to hear about it. At any rate, thanks so much for watching, guys, and have a great day.